Hello everyone. So today we have an article by the Los Angeles Times. The attack on the Capitol may pose a cybersecurity risk. Here's how. And before we start the article, we want to say, we call this. A couple of videos ago, we actually posted the video where these things were missing in it. Apparently, we called it exactly on because now they're actually reporting it through, mind you, the Los Angeles Times, a liberal newspaper. They're letting you know that this has occurred now and it's quite the possibility. But we'll read on to a little bit of the buts and what ifs of this whole calamity. The pro-Trump mob that stormed the U.S. Capitol Senate floor and Capitol Rotunda on Wednesday may have breached more than just the building's physical security. Photos show rioters in congressional offices, including the House of Speaker Nancy Pelosi's, and any computers left would be vulnerable, and so could paperwork, such as personal schedules or mail that weren't locked away. Information security expert said Senator Jeff Merkley, a Democrat from Oregon, said his office was ransacked and a laptop was stolen. An aide to Pelosi said a laptop used only for presentations was snatched from a conference room. So they were all up in Pelosi's space. They went all through her stuff. Now, in the rest of this article, they're going to go on to say that Pelosi had all her stuff encrypted, and unless she was logged on, it doesn't matter. They're not going to be able to decrypt all of that to get in there. However, we wonder if they were actually impregnable, why would they be even putting that out there for the news? But we read on to the article. What does this mean for the security of the nation's information? Here are insights from experts who spoke with the Times. Does the invasion of the Capitol pose a cybersecurity risk? It depends. If rioters get their hands on congressional computers that were still logged in, they may have been able to access information. But if those computers were encrypted, they wouldn't be able to get anything, said Jesse Varsalone. Associate Professor of Computer Networks and Cybersecurity at University of Maryland Global Campus. However, if a computer was encrypted but documents were left open on screen, that information would already have been decrypted and could have been read, said Suzanne Spaulding, an advisor to Nozomi Networks and former Undersecretary for the Department of Homeland Security. That means members of the mob could have snapped images of documents such as emails. So if the screen was open, anything that was on it that happened to be security risks could potentially be out there floating around the internet, etc., etc. This is setting up for a lifetime of conspiracy theories and rundowns by the government to chase these documentations down and chase everyone down that may have serious information from our American federal government. These people might have actually left this stuff open. We know we're talking about the same woman who said you had to sign it before you read it. This is sloppy. This is lazy. And we would actually bet a little bit that Pelosi did, in fact, leave her computer open all the time, especially in the building, thinking no one would ever dare do what they did. But we read on to the article. Quote, I would not assume right off the bat that the folks who broke into the Capitol, forced their way in, had folks whose objective and skill set was to use their physical access to gain access to the IT system, to sensitive information, she said. But if someone were to take a laptop, they can later decide, hey, this could really be interesting. I don't have the skills to exploit it, but I'm going to find someone who does. And again, I feel like this is kind of a sideswipe. Do you really believe that all of these quote-unquote horrible Trump supporters that came and raided the Capitol didn't have backup from other groups? And furthermore, none of them happen to be IT guys themselves. Out of the 75 million Trump supporters, not very many of them are IT guys. Do you understand that a lot of these Trump supporters spent a lot of time on the internet? I'm pretty sure they know how to navigate things and pretty sure they can find either a hacker that doesn't care or a hacker that's on their side. So these things, and maybe let out in the entirety of Biden's ugh, presidency. But we continue on with the article. The theft of a laptop at Merkley's office poses special concern because the machine is part of a federal network that could help outsiders gain access to the entire network. Meaning everything. We're talking about 
new codes. We're talking about security threats and risks all around the globe. We're talking about where everyone's stationed, where all of our boats, our subs, everything. No wonder why in the media they are frantic about this action that was taking place. It's not the action itself. It's what they did with that action. And to say that these people didn't have the ability to know once they got in that they were going to get things that were pertinent information. We're talking about the same people that believe a lot of Pizzagate stuff and really weird stuff out there. Some of these people genuinely believe all of this. And maybe they're just right. But we might find out and maybe that is the freak out. It's one of the reasons why almost instantaneously they had 60 people in custody. We had a summer of violence with burning down buildings and we hardly even had 60 people. And some of those people were let out. But we read on. Quote, that's the concern about a stolen laptop, Spalding said. It's not just about what's on the laptop. So could someone have put malware onto congressional computers? So in other words, did they hack into them and now have left security threats to those hacked computers. It's possible, but Varsalone said it's probably unlikely. Quote, it seems like they were more motivated to kind of actually derail the Electoral College vote certification as opposed to plant something, he said. That's what you would, I guess, have to say. They really did have you by the pinky toe, and it seems like these people, if they did get this information, really do have you by the pinky toe. What about sensitive or confidential documents? Congressional leaders with security clearances must abide by rules to intend to protect that information, Barcelona said. If such information was on a computer, it probably would be shielded with encryption. And they already pretty much answered that question earlier on. And encryption can be decrypted. It's only really a matter of time. How does this situation compare with other potential threats to the nation's information security? It's not clear yet whether Wednesday's events included a breach of cybersecurity or information security at all, Spaulding said. See, these people, they either know and they're not letting everyone know that this information's out and now they have to pick up the pieces in secrecy because our news agencies would just be told by the FBI don't say anything and these agencies won't say anything. So they're potentially out there right now trying to piece together all that was took from that building. There is no indication that any of the writers had any IT savvy or were prepared to infect congressional computers with malware, she said. Quote, from an IT perspective, when I look at the events of what happened yesterday and all of the incredible implications, the IT cybersecurity concerns are not the highest on my list, Spalding said. And of course, we would expect hearing that from someone who's trying to keep it on the hush. But we continue on. The riot at the Capitol came just weeks after a much bigger cybersecurity revelation that an outside nation state, quote, suspected to be Russia, had been spying on U.S. government computer networks by exploiting a vulnerability in software produced by SolarWinds, a Texas company. The SolarWinds breach affected 18,000 of its customers, including the Treasury and Commerce Department. The FBI and the Homeland Security Department are investigating the matter, and the Homeland Security Department said last month that there was an, quote, unacceptable risk to the executive branch from the large-scale breach. So how will this change security at the Capitol? Policies probably will be reviewed, and physical security as well as computer security probably will be bolstered, Barcelona said. In general, a lot of government agencies tend to have a lot of really good security, and they have for years and years and years, he said. For the most part, we kind of believe that. However, we kind of wonder if these people realize that they really got caught with their pants down. They really didn't expect all of these people to come in, and really all it would take is one or two really good IT guys. So if they really expect this not to be the case, I think they're being silly. But what do you read on? In this case, he said, the U.S. Capitol Police were overwhelmed by and unprepared for the size of the mob. Quote, that's where the real breakdown was, he said. And see, they actually realized that matter. The Capitol Police declined offers of help from the National Guard. And I want to point out, this says the Capitol Police declined it. This is a liberal Los Angeles Times paper, so at least they're trying to print out the truth a little bit here instead of just directly blaming Trump. 
all of the news agencies you see are directly blaming Trump, saying that he declined offers from help from the National Guard. The whole time, the Capitol Police declined the offer, not him. And I believe the Capitol Police in their own locale actually have more power than the president in that situation. I'll, I'd have to look it up, but I believe in that situation, unless he goes paper to pen and he signs something to get that done, he can't outpower the police in that area. But the Capitol Police declined offers to help from the National Guard days before the riot and the FBI agents during the riot and from the FBI agents during the riot, according to the Associated Press. So that was all on the police. They did not believe that the Trump supporters would actually go through with anything. They thought it was all just wolf tickets. The police chief is currently announcing that he will resign on Thursday. His failure and his subsequent Harry Carey is exactly what we would expect in this situation. You have proved your usefulness and now you're gone. It seems like now maybe patriots and actual law-abiding citizens are having the hard time because they can't be law-abiding citizen anymore. Forget Trump. Forget all this ridiculous nonsense about who to blame. All of this is what you saw is just a symptom of the entire problem. We were not happy with the government before Trump took office. Obviously so, because Trump won the election. But now we're having an issue where two-thirds of the same office previously is back in the saddle again. Biden signed up two-thirds of pretty much everybody's of Obama's cabinet. So you're getting the same thing that you got four years ago. And that didn't make people very happy either. And they're having that reinforced back onto them by an election that we think is fairly easy to contest. However, many in the government don't see it that way. We have no rights as American citizens to question these things. And the media puts the lockdown on pretty much anything that is bad on Biden. But if these folks have the laptop, or even Pelosi's laptop for that matter, that is a huge security risk for them. And we wonder what all you would find on there, mostly advertisements for Polygrip and vodka, is our guess. If these things are decrypted, what do you guys think is going to be on those computers? What do you think they'll find? We think it could go deeper than just them taking pictures off of a screen. If they were logged on at the time, anyone could put in a memory card and download files. It would only take a few minutes. They had enough time. And we ask you, would you raid the Capitol, stand there for a while, and then just leave? It seems pretty obvious, at least to us, that there were secondary ideologies there. There were other people there that were trying to do more than just stand in the Capitol for a few minutes and leave. It seems pretty obvious. Anyway, folks, you have a wonderful afternoon, a good night, a good morning, whichever. Please like, share, and subscribe. We really do appreciate that around here. Also, don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you don't hit the notification bell, you might have a problem getting our videos. God bless each and every one of you. See ya.